Welcome to part three of Practical Strategies for Parents in Supporting Children with Dyslexia, Tips to Support Reading. In the early years and key stage one age range, we start to look at additional support for children when they have received reading and phonics instruction in school, but they aren't showing the progress that we might expect. This is when we need to give targeted instruction and support. The purpose of targeted support at this age is to get the phonic code embedded. This is both in terms of decoding for reading, which is mapping the letter shape to a sound and how to blend the sounds together to form a word, and encoding for spelling, starting to spot phonological patterns and the spelling of irregular sight words. It's also important to get their fine motor skills ready for writing. When supporting reading at this stage, we need to get the core skills embedded using exposure to the letters and words in as many fun and multi-sensory ways as possible. In the early years, reading and singing nursery rhymes with your child is a brilliant way to help them to understand rhyming. And it also introduces the idea of onset and rhyme, when we can group words into word families that end in the same sound. Onset is the initial sound, such as the p of pan and the rhyme is the string of letters that follow. Onset and rhyme are used to improve phonological or sound awareness by helping children learn about word families and helping learners decode new words. Practicing sight words or high frequency words. These are common words that children recognize instantly without having to sound them out. Words such as it and and. Recognizing words by sight helps children become faster, more fluent readers. Many sight words are tricky to read and spell, however, such as the words come, was, the and to, because they aren't spelt the way that they sound. You can colour code sight words, perhaps green to show which ones can be sounded out and that follow spelling rules, and red to show the tricky words with irregular spellings that you can't sound out. The most common kind of dyslexia, phonological dyslexia, causes individuals to have trouble mapping the sounds that make up words. This makes it difficult for them to sound out words in reading and to spell correctly. If a child has difficulty decoding, they may therefore benefit from a method that teaches whole word reading or sight recognition of high frequency words to de-emphasise the decoding process for these words. Repetition of these sight words is key. You can create your own flashcards. Just Google the first 100 high frequency words or use your school's reading curriculum words. With flashcards, you can play matching pairs games. You can stick them on your fridge. You could play games like Go Fish, for example. We've attached a link to some fun games with flashcards to give you more ideas. You can also use printable flashcards, which are great for game playing if you need multiple copies. Whilst a structured synthetics phonics approach is crucial in teaching children the phonic code for reading, it is also important to prepare children for variability in sounds. We don't always pronounce a sound in one given way. It is useful for children to know early on that vowel sounds in particular can have a short synthetic phonic sound, such as the a ah in apple, and it can also have an alternative long sound in words, such as the a in ape, when the vowel says its letter name. For example, if we look at the word dozing, we would ask the child to start with a synthetic phonics approach. So let's sound it out. And the child will probably say de o zing dozing. Then we would ask the child, is this the word that you know? We can then ask the child to try an alternative vowel sound, ask them to reread it, and then ask, is this a new word that we know? So saying de o zing dozing. It's also important to include a top-down approach of contextual clues and prior knowledge of the book or text. So does this word fit with the context of the story and are there any picture clues on the page? For more information on set for variability teaching of reading and a top-down approach, please see the brilliant webinar by Dr. Valerie Muter for the British Dyslexia Association on YouTube entitled Phonics and Learning to Read details of which are given in the accompanying useful links section. 
Supporting your own child with reading can be very tricky if you have a reluctant reader, so input needs to be relaxed and fun wherever possible. We highly recommend the reading card games by readsuccessfully.com called TRUGS, which stands for Teaching Reading Using Games. My own children loved to play them with me. There are four different games in a box covering different phonics levels in a progressive order. One of the games is similar to Uno, for example, and the children are less aware they are learning as they play. The Red Trugs Box Stage 1 is brilliant for practising reading first words for this age group. They've also added to their range a tricky words section and also a picture set of games for learners with English as a second language. Reading aloud with your child is considered the best way to prepare a child to learn to read and to continue to support reading. You may have a child, however, who refuses to read. In a moment, I'm going to show you a short clip of how to engage your child with the text if they're a reluctant reader without necessarily reading page by page. This is when magnetic letters can be useful for your child, such as the ones shown in the picture, so they can feel the shape of letters and build their own words to read with you. Instead of reading pages of text, you can play games with the words on the page. So you might ask your child, for example, to put a finger on a capital letter or on a full stop. You can then read the whole page to them or you can put the book away for that day. As long as they've engaged with reading for even a short while, it's a start. If your child is then willing to read a book with you, when they come across a tricky word, give it to them so that the story will continue to flow and the meaning of the story won't be lost. This will mean that they will begin to enjoy reading as it becomes less mechanical. If your child loses their place in the text easily, encourage them to put um, to point rather to each word as they read or to use a line tracker or a ruler under the line of text so that they don't miss out lines which is a common thing that can happen. So now I'm going to show you a short clip of how to engage your child with reading. Right Chloe it looks like you've got a new reading book from school. Should we have a little look at it? Shall we try and read the title together first? It's called The, the Back. Pack. The backpack. Excellent. What can you see in the picture? There's a boy pointing at a toy shop and he's holding something on his back and he's smiling and his mum's smiling down at him too. Oh, we love going into a toy shop. Do you think that's why they're smiling? Yeah. <laughs> Should we play a little game? Yeah. Okay, let's try and find some things in this book. Turn to a page. Right, okay, let's see. Can you point to a full stop for me? There. Oh, well done. Is there a, are there any more on the page? Here. Good. And how about this page? There. Excellent. Now you've found a full stop. Can you find a capital letter that we start a sentence with? There. Oh, good. Do you know the sound that that letter makes? Ah. Well done. Are there any more? Here. Oh, good. Do you know this word? Eh. Good. And in that word, it says I'll, which is short for I will. Well done, you. If we go to the front of the book, we've got some key words here and I can see some sounds in bold. What do you think that sound is at the end? Good, a C and a K together saying the K sound. Can you sound out this word for me? L -a -k. And blend it. L -a -k. Excellent. Now, if you were finding those words tricky, we might look at our magnetic letters and build some of these words together. So how about making a word here by putting a vowel in there for me. Can you do that and then read it for me? Okay, so you've chosen what sound? Ah. Lovely, can you sound this out? P -a -k. Says pa. Oh, brilliant. Can you try and make another word by changing the vowel? P -a -k. Says pa. Excellent, and that's what a duck might do <laughs> in the story, isn't it? Brilliant. When we've read a book like this together, it's really good to check for comprehension at the end to make sure you've understood everything. In these books, they have a little summary at the end where they ask you questions such as, where did Chip put his backpack? Why did the boy pick up Chip's backpack? These are brilliant questions. Some books don't have this section, but always remember the WH question words to check for comprehension. Who, when, where and why. Thank you, Chloe. We'll read another time. Thank you. Okay. So 
The idea there is really to have fun and engage your child with reading in a variety of different ways. If they find it fun, they will want to sit down and do it again with you the next time. So just to recap on some of the ideas I've covered today. Remember the importance of nursery rhymes so the child can start to recognise the onset and rhyme patterns in word families. Try using magnetic letters, card games and flashcards which can all help them to strengthen those early core phonics and reading skills.